Hello, the bookquesters. It is I, Aaron, the bookquester. So today we have this great, awesome, thrilling ride of a book, Ranger's Apprentice, the Royal Ranger, the Red Fox Clan, by John Flanagan, and it is the second book of the Royal Ranger series of the Ranger's Apprentice. It's a subdivision, and it tells of a future of Cassandra's. Cassandra and Horace's daughter, Madeline, who decides to train to become a ranger and rangers are princess, the royal ranger of the of new beginning. In this book, the Madeline fights the the Night Sealer with her mentor, Will Treaty. This was actually made to kill two birds with one stone because number one, Will Will has been being very gloomy and. Much like a frozen giant, since his wife Alice died from saving a couple of children, and well, Will was totally devastated because of this. And now, for a couple months now, he wouldn't smile or make jokes, which was a kind of ser serious amount of depression for Will because he was also called a cheerful young face, or. The one who brings smiles to people. He was also called the butterfly. He would flutter over ideas as fast as a butterfly flutters over flowers. But now he's just a grizzled old snowman. And as for Maddie, she had been well. She's a teenage girl, and she's becoming becoming to you know scream and yell and. Resist her mother and father's intentions, and she's been hunting in the night. So, in the Royal Ranger, they decide he she must be trained as a ranger to learn discipline. So, and okay, Kindles are uncomfortable sometimes. So, in this book, the next the sequel to the Royal Ranger: A New Beginning, the Red Fox Clan. There is a secret group that had that has been. Grouping for days and years and months, and they are planning to overthrow Cassandra, and why? Because of a petty reason, that they thought that the heir to the throne must be a boy, and this person who had started the Red Fox Clan, he was a distant, distant relative of the royal line, and he. Thought that he was the only male successor of the line, and therefore he had the right to become king. And that right had been stolen from him when Cassandra was allowed to take the throne, be the heir. And Cassandra's daughter Madeline was also claimed heir, which meant that she had to kill two birds with a stone. You know what I mean? And this mysterious man, he had learned. To charm people, to have a mask all over his body to make him look like a nice person. Like for example, I mean, I there's couple of people that I know I, that I think will be nice if there's a certain tone to a, to a voice that helps me think that he's a good person, or twinkle, a mischievous twinkle in his eye, or something that just has to be claimed friendly. But this guy, he's using those looks to look innocent when he is planning a rebellion. And well, um, so, so next, Madeline and Will. So Madeline, you see, they are they are having an assessment for becoming a, I think, third year ranger. And when she is trying to become a thirty-year ranger, well, she fails the assessment. Well, she doesn't fail it. She just didn't get a perfect score, which she's very disappointed of. Why? Well, mostly because the thing is mostly because um, Madeline. Well, she the mantra of the rangers: trust the cloak, the the cloak that. Almost camouflages them and makes them almost invisible. And when they when they when they unroll themselves in the cloak and 
they just um lie in the grass. No one can see them, especially in the dark. But that was the assessment. And these guys, these searchers, well, searchers, they are like practicing. They just stepped on Madeline's foot, and then Madeline was like, "Ow, that was my hand!" and she kind of failed that part. She can retake that assessment. And it sucked for Madeline because she had been going for a perfect score. She's called Maddie, by the way, by her friends. And I count myself as a friend because I've been reading this book, okay? Just just go on with it. And then she went on vacation. Well, she has to. She heard about the Red Fox Clan, but at that point, they thought there was like 40 or 40 or 50 members, and it wasn't much of a big deal. And, well, everyone thought that the Red Fox Clan was a mere rebellion, and they could stamp it out easily. And Medellin, well, she had to go on vacation, because number one, Cassandra was really mad that, um, you know, Maddie went on to the ranger's life. Why? Because, well, first of all, because Maddie, well, she was only supposed to take one year of ranger training, but she decided to take the full training, and her mother was mad, and because she liked her daughter and didn't want her daughter in to go into danger. And then, she kind of blamed it on Willow Treaty, you know, her mentor, and she was really mad, and it was the only thing that she cared about, the vacation. And that vacation, at the end of the year, well, Will, Will simply couldn't risk Cassandra's wrath over not her daughter missing the, the vacation because, well, there was some danger in the kingdom, like there always is. And so, basically, she sent back. And when she's sent back, well, Cassandra hugs her, and she's reunited into the royal family. But, she is allowed to petrol around and look for danger. And then she finds it. She finds secret passageways through the entire castle. And she finds out that Daimon. The, the, sim, the seemingly nice and loyal person, the, the captain of the guards, he is a traitor. And that he was the leader of the Red Fox clan, and he was also a dis, uh, very um, far relative. I actually guessed that when I heard about this guy, when Medellin described him as charming and just easygoing. Because those were the words when, when the, in the prologue, when the observer, like, described himself when he puts on his little disguise. They said that he said he was charming, and he looked easygoing, and he looked like a good ally, and so on. And that simply matched Deacon, uh, Di, Di, Diamond, I'm sorry. And I guessed it, and I was right. She find, Ma Maddie finds out. When she's in a small little shed-like place, I guess, like behind the woods, it's abandoned, but the Red Fox Clan has been using it for their little things, for their meetings, and, well, the Red Fox Clan, they were gonna invade the Castle Rowan tomorrow, the next day, and ma and she thought she was gonna warn them, but she got lost in the woods and everything, so while she was running because she got caught, no Someone hurt them, him, her, and she was running, and she got lost, and she was too late, and everything. And in the last part, Kester, she uses the secret passageways to meet Cassandra. And Cassandra says that you need, you need to break Gylan, the Ranger Commandment, and Horus, the, the greatest knight of Aralon, who had been lured into a trap. And were trapped in a small fortress, and she and and she told Aralua. I mean, she told Maddie, her daughter, that she knew exactly the people who would break, who would bring fear to those damn Red Fox Clan scums. And in my opinion, I think that person, those men, will be Scandians because. 
First of all, everyone's afraid of Scandians. They're huge ruffians with a huge axe. Basically the Vikings of this series. And they they swing their battle axes and they certainly bring fear to the ranks. And I know there's uh, other like like the desert tribes from from the Aridi, the desert tribes were very well organized, and all those guys. But I think the Scandians will be the best choice for defeating the Red Fox clan. So, so I think it's a really, really great book, thrilling book actually. And I think Madeline is such a realistic character that I almost believe she will actually was real, and I'm sure she is. Just that her name is Madeline, and she isn't a princess. And like always, your bookquester, Aaron the bookquester, a must read, guys. I'm sorry I didn't do the Royal Ranger first, but it kind of just slipped from my mind, you know what I mean?